Welcome to the Young Crones Cafe, where you can get a magic brew full of all sorts of information, both witchy and practical. Grab a cup of coffee and join us. I'm Elizabeth, a wordsmith. And I'm Dave, a modern day sage. We are going to talk about various witchcraft and life topics from a slightly more mature perspective, at least most of the time. Thanks for joining us. Today's metaphysical kernel of thought is synchronicities. The fancy definition for a synchronicity is the coincidental occurrence of events and especially psychic events, such as similar thoughts in widely separated persons or a mental image of an unexpected event before it happens that seems related, but are not explained by conventional mechanisms of causality. For us on the path, this translates to two or more things that are seemingly unrelated that can convey personal meaning or insight for a practitioner. A part of our personal practice is about learning to perceive these messages that seem to show up out of nowhere. It is easy to ignore synchronicities or brush them off as coincidental occurrences as we are moving through our mundane responsibilities, or maybe it is because we get too busy or focused on the next thing we need to accomplish to really notice that. It is about learning to recognize that they are happening and that they do have a meaning for us. We often think of them as small whispers from our internal spark of the divine, reminding us that we are magical. They can be gentle nudges moving us further along our path or sending us in an entirely different direction than where we expected to go. They may be confirmation that our intuition is giving us a different perspective on a situation. Whatever their purpose may be, they show up regularly and with more frequency the further along we get on the path. Okay, so we're on to another fun topic tonight, you and I. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Dave. We seem to have found a batch of them in a row here in the book, as it were. Sue and well, I it's them a nicely book. written book. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Sue and I seem to find when we related them to certain parts of our creed of the path, which we'll have to do an episode or 10 about at some point, um, they seem to fit categorically under certain pieces sure. of it better. Yeah. Sure. And, 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 on a, a side note there on the creed i'm actually working on a poster version Ooh. of it um i'm working on the art for that and uh trying to get the font right and whatnot but that'll be something that we'll have available and i'll probably just share it like in the discord or what have you so that you know all of our members get a chance to take a look at it oh that's exciting i will want one of those myself when we get to that point <laughs> once i get back to my actual home which if anybody right this thing actually cares the electricians start wiring on monday the drywall is out everything on the amazingly detailed inventory list that the insurance company is writing up has made it to the dumpster so <laughs> we are slowly but surely putting the house back together i feel like it's like sometimes synchronicities yes there you go so define synchronicities for us Okay. Do you want the fancy definition or the easy definition? Give us the easy one, please. Okay. Well, the way we, we, we think, see it is these are two or more things that are seemingly unrelated that can convey personal meaning or insight for a practitioner when you put them together, for want of a better way to describe it. Okay. It's those aha moments suddenly <laughs> that... <laughs> you know, show up when we least expect them or when we're looking for them. Well, and that's, that's the reason I hesitated and let you explain, because for me, I think the synchronicity is sort of three way in that I'm recognizing that item A and item B, although in a mundane way are completely unrelated, not only do I see that the two of them are very, very well connected, um, it some sometimes to the point where we form correspondences. Like this morning, I saw robins in the yard, and I thought, okay, great, now spring's actually going to be here. Um, but but not not only noticing the timing of the birds and the season, but noticing that I noticed it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the two things that are seemingly a coincidence 
and I have sort of this moment of multiple or uh, mutual awareness. I feel like I'm part of that when those synchronicities happen. I think so. I like to think of those aha moments. Right, right. Like, oh, that's where I, I am seeing this and this together, even though, like you said, they're seemingly unrelated. Or this happens, and 10 minutes later, something happens that, for me, connects the dots. Oh, absolutely. My entire day yesterday was a sequence of conversations that I could not have had the day that I had without the conversations happening in that particular sequence. In other words, if different people had visited during different times of the day, mm -hmm. I would have had a different day. I agree. You know, and, and I think on the path, especially when we started figuring out what we were doing and why we were doing it and all the things that led to our creating the tradition, a lot of it was synchronicities or fueled by synchronicities when we did this, then all of a sudden this happened kind of over here that seemed completely unrelated. But when we looked at, you know, point A and point B almost simultaneously, you know, like that quick head turn that you do sometimes, all of a sudden it, it sort of all started coalescing in a different way for us. Well, and, and it's neat that you can describe it that way from within the relationship that was you and Sue. Um, oh, yeah. Because in my particular case, I observed it from external to the relationship. Mm -hmm. But there was, there was a point in time where suddenly, constantly, you would say something about you and the phone would ring and it would be you. I mean, not not little coincidental things, but like constantly she would say something about you and you would send an email or she would say something mm -hmm. about you and you would call or you would say something about her and she would call you. Mm -hmm. And it got to be almost <laughs> comical to watch the two of you read each other. Okay. So the synchronicities in your writing probably came as a result of the synchronicities in your relationship as friends. And that in itself is a synchronicity. Yeah, exactly. You can, see, when you start looking for them, and this is the whole point of this idea, is they're everywhere. And well, yeah, and we have to be aware of them and notice them. I think it's the big thing we get, especially when we are in the middle of mundane life more than anything else having those little pings as it were yep. reminds us that we're magical reminds us that it's not all about the mundane everything all the time well and what i've tried to do is when i notice one you know when i i notice a coincidence or a syn synchronicity or something like that i try to to reinforce that i recognize that and i'm looking for them now mm -hmm. um and practicing finding them and it was kind of neat because late in the paragraph here you you said something to the effect of and we see them with more frequency the further along we get in our practice Mm -hmm. I think that is directly a, a result of the fact that what we are doing is we are teaching ourselves to look for all of these connections. Well, we are sure. teaching, our, teaching ourselves to look at similarities and things when we've been in a culture that for years has really sort of stressed all of the differences. I think so. I think that's a big part of it. And I think that's what we meant when we wrote that is when you're new there's so much information that you have that you think you have to know that you have to learn you have to like you said correspondences you have to learn you know the directions and and, and the right the quote unquote right way to create sacred space or the fact that you have to create space. So that's another issue but just all those little bits and pieces and you're so focused on that and that and, and the actual making sure you're doing it quote unquote right somehow that you missed the point, which is just to enjoy the fuck out of it. Right. And if it's and if you screw it up, the world is not gonna end. You know, no. and once we no. get once you get past that and you get a little comfortable doing ritual the way you do it or whatever, 
I say, I say it, I say at least a dozen times a day to people, look, you can't pray wrong. It doesn't work that way. You can't do any sort of spiritual investment into a, another, you know, we talk about the internal or the imminent spark of the divine and then the external, um, the universal spark. But the fact that you're aware enough to be trying to make that connection, you can't do that wrong. No, you can't. See, that's the whole point. And I think that's the big part about synchronicities. It's that they remind us that we're doing, we're not doing it wrong. Or it reassures us in some way that we're actually growing and changing as human beings into something better. Well, and it reassures me as a pagan or as a shaman, it reassures me that I am still observing my world with at least some percentage of a magical eye and i'm not just completely blind to it anymore no um and I that's why i say when you start to recognize these things practice recognizing them more and more and more <laughs> and you find connections throughout your day that um, there was a television program that made like engineering connections together. And some of them seemed kind of far fetched at the beginning. But then after seeing the supporting evidence, you could see that there was a direct path of causality that could not have been coincidental. Exactly. Which, which is what a synchronicity is at its heart. Right, right. Absolutely. It's a moment of magic. I think so. And inventions themselves are a moment of magic. People have that aha moment where they can suddenly figure out how to put A and B together. And who do you used to say the universe is winking at you? Yeah, I like that. Remember one. that? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. You know, and it's, I mean, it certainly beats that cosmic two by four when we're not getting the message fast enough. <laughs> right. Right. You know, and we've all had our share of those. Okay, we tried the nice route. Now we're going to get your attention. Well, and here's something that, that came up in the reading that hadn't really occurred to me, but I've been talking about it with some folks over the last few weeks. Uh -huh. um, you know, there's a reference in there to having sudden out of the blue thoughts and trying to understand the connections there because they are a form of synchronicity. Something popped into your head for some reason that is not readily apparent to you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the whole top or subject of earworms or just suddenly having a song in my head. And in, in my case, being a musician inside my, my spirit brain, there is a huge library of music. Mm -hmm. But I will suddenly hear a song in my head that I know for a concrete fact that there is no way anywhere in my environment that some combination of sounds made me think of that song. I, I will get these weirdest, weirdest deep cut tracks. And so I've started to recognize that they are in fact synchronicities or maybe messages. And yeah. so what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to look at, all right, you know what, where is the message here? Is it in the words of the song? I tried looking up lyrics. I've been practicing that. <laughs> yeah. Or is it something about the artist? Or, and, and the closest I've come up with so far is when I get these things, they've, they've all been songs from my childhood. Okay. And so what I do is I try to recall, they'll make me remember something from my childhood and I try to recall what it was that I felt like at that moment that I'm recalling. Mm -hmm. And I think that feeling is itself the message that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. So now I'm waiting for the other side of that coincidence or synchronicity just to tie that together for me while I describe it with enough intention that I'm manifesting it to be so, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Because all I can think of is I was listening to a podcast the other day and the person was talking you about the podcasts. Oh, yeah. Come on. We all do. I like to think we all do. I get, I listen to them in my car. 
because quite frankly, I don't want to listen to any modern music that my grandchildren would put on. And if I'm driving, I get to control the, the radio. That's kind of the role. And I find that, that it makes the endless driving I do I find sometimes I get resentful about, oh my God, I spent four hours driving people around today and I got nothing that I wanted to do done and I can get an attitude. And instead, if I put the podcasts in and I usually listen to them more than once if it's something that I really want to hear because it's I'm in traffic, but sure. I feel like I am learning something while I'm driving. Yeah, your feet in so, your head, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And, but back to the point, therapy. She says that everyone can benefit from therapy because we all operate as adults with our attitudes and, and how we do things and how we think and how we react based on our feelings from when we were kids. Unless we get to learn our know ourselves better and become aware that, okay, I'm acting, on the, I'm feeling this way. And when I was six, I felt this way and this happened and I felt out of control kind of. So you take back your power, in essence, by going to therapy and learning to know yourself. What I'm getting then is I'm getting the emotional memory, but I'm not getting enough detail to actually be able to describe what it was that was happening in my life. Mm -hmm. Or how does it relate to what you're doing right now as an adult? Well, that's just it, because yeah. I seem to be getting these at the right times for me to start thinking of them in terms of being messages or mm -hmm. there's something that seems to be channeling through me and I'm I'm trying to understand it more. Exactly. Which is the whole point of what I just said too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and but well, I Well, and and even, you know, uh, well, reading about the synchronicities, um pre precognition kind of figures into that because you know, like you you talk about who people will have the similar thoughts or people separated by distance and something will happen to one person and the other person miles away senses it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's enough of a synchronicity in itself to, at least for me, remind me that everything in the universe is interrelated and interconnected. And at least for me, that's always been a very soothing or holding thought that everything is in fact connected oh i agree it is for me too just knowing that and and we don't even have to know sometimes and we don't have to know what all the connections are either right yeah, yeah. sometimes it's just pretty to watch the machine work especially yeah. when you have belief that the machine is going to continue to work exactly i think i think that's part of it too and, and i think that relates to magic too i mean the more yeah. you practice magic and the more you do magic and notice that the magic that you're doing is having a real effect you know that just builds on finding more and more and more connections or synchronicities i think so and i think that's what we really meant more than anything else that once you get further on your path sure become, you know they, we seem to have more of them and i don't know if it's that we have more of them or it's that we notice them more yeah, I spend more time. I've been doing these exercises to try to keep myself during the day focused on the fact that I'm never completely on one side of the hedge. I try mm -hmm. to stay in a, a magical space. Fortunately, I work in a place that's really supportive of that. Yeah, I forget where I was going with that. Sorry. That's okay. I've done that before, too. With or without Sue or with or without you, you'll be going along. And all of a sudden you find yourself in the middle of a corner and going, how did I get here? Well, yeah. Um, for me, it usually happens right before the top step mm -hmm. on a flight of stairs. Yeah. It dawns on me that I have forgotten why I climbed this set of stairs. <laughs> and then you go back to where you were and it's like, oh, that's why I went upstairs. And not for nothing, that itself is a synchronicity. Mm -hmm. When we're able to go back to that same place and re retrace our steps, I believe there's a form of time travel there where we can sort of go back and experience that again. And that's where we get that, oh, aha, that's right. I was looking for the remote. Yes. However, I wish I could remember before I go back up and down the stairs again, if, if I could time travel mentally enough to just stand at the top of the stairs and retrace the thoughts in my head 
why I went up there. It might be easier on my hips, but hey. You yeah, know. I think you might be asking a bit much for it. <laughs> hey, come on. We practice magic. Anything is possible. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, you know. Right. But yeah, but I, I think that's that's a good spot to end that whole discussion. But seriously. Well, yeah, there's a there's a synchronicity there when you and I both look at each other with a blank stare and say, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think the other piece is for our listeners, take a minute tomorrow and see if you can see a couple of synchronicities. Start small. We're not asking you to suddenly be aware of them happening all around you constantly because they are. Start small. Look for one or two. Look for that one thing and like go, oh, that's why I thought something 10 minutes ago. Practice yeah. a little bit of awareness and enjoy the heck out of it, please. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we all have to start somewhere. Well, and, and like I say, for me, the the journey of trying to walk through my day in both the magical and the mundane, I sort of am able to sense the ebb and flow of where I am on that hedge. And it just reminds me that I am actually successfully walking with, with one foot in each. And that's a very, very um, grounding or stabilizing energy for me. I can see that. Because for that second, when you are aware of the ebb and flow, you're in balance with yourself. Absolutely. I mean, which is an ideal, never to be completely realized. We've talked about that endlessly. But right. for that moment, it sure is a heck of a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it feels damn good, too. So with that being said, we will reiterate what I said in the extra last week. Happy spring to everyone, even if it's a couple days late. Yep, happy equinox. Happy equinox, happy dark nights of the moon. We're just ticking along with all sorts of magical energy. So with that being said, may you find mercy and reverence in all things. Be safe, be kind, and be loved. Witch stones are a divination tool we created as part of our practice that deals with what we call concrete stones specific types and kinds of energy, and conceptual stones, things and ideas about witchcraft, which can be read with either a seen or an unseen meaning. Recently, we have developed a set of oracle cards using this information. We would like to introduce you to one of these stones right now. Today's witch stone spotlight topic is the four solstice and equinox cards within the concrete cards. While we've already talked about the individual characteristics of our four solstice and equinox cards, today we're looking at how these four concrete cards relate directly to the elements and to the cycles of season, life, moon phase, and time of day. We'll go through these in two different ways so that it's easy to see them as they relate and connect to one another. So for example, many of us are accustomed to the old saying, earth, air, fire, water. So too, these concrete cards have similar places on the paths cycles. The first way I'll describe them is as such. Summer solstice, autumn equinox, spring equinox, and winter solstice, all align directly to the elements of earth, air, fire, and water. You'll notice that the order of them is a little bit different than some of the other groups of cards. I just want you to be aware of that. Summer solstice, autumn equinox, spring equinox, and winter solstice all also align with the seasonal cycles of the times of Beltane, the times of Lofmas, the times of Candlemas, and the times of Samhain. In our life cycle, summer solstice, autumn equinox, spring equinox, and winter solstice align with life, death, birth, and rebirth. 
in our moon cycle, summer solstice, autumn equinox, spring equinox, and winter solstice represent full, waning, waxing, and dark or new moons. In our day cycle, summer solstice, autumn equinox, spring equinox, winter solstice correspond to noon, twilight, dawn, and midnight. Another way to describe these and their relationships is as follows. Summer solstice is the element of earth. Summer solstice is the season of times of Beltane. Summer solstice is the period of life in the life cycle. It is the full moon on the lunar cycle. Summer solstice is noontime in our day cycle. Autumn equinox is the element of air. Autumn equinox is the season of times of loaf mass. Autumn equinox is the moment of death in the life cycle. It is the waning moon on the lunar cycle. And autumn equinox is the dusk or twilight time in our day cycle. Spring equinox is the element of fire. Spring equinox is the season of times of candle mass. Spring equinox is the period of birth in our life cycle. And it is the waxing moon on the lunar cycle. Spring equinox is the dawn time in our day cycle. And finally, winter solstice is the element of water. Winter solstice is the season of times of Samhain. Winter solstice is the time of rebirth in the life cycle and is the dark moon in our lunar cycle. Winter solstice is the midnight time in the day cycle. Before we go, we would like to present you with a tip or trick or witchy hint, just something to make your day go better because we live in a mixture of the magical and the mundane. Today's tip, trick, or witchy hint is another reminder of the magical realm around us using sound. One of the things that I've been trying to focus on this year has become, has been to become better at maintaining the perspective of walking my path in constant connection with both sides of the hedge, the magical and the mundane. I've been inspired to create a handful of little life hacks that help me keep aware with each step that I live with one foot in the magical and one foot in the mundane one foot in the spiritual and one in the practical. So after leveraging the power of scent to help me reset during a tough day, finding a visual way to remember the moon cycle with my colored bandanas, and now a tactile reminder of my magical side with the penny in my shoe, I wanted to find a way to incorporate the sense of sound into my daily kit. So for this tip, trick or witchy hint, I'm going to suggest a practice that I am adapting simply to help remind me that when I walk through my day, that I have a constant and unbreakable connection to spirit and to the imminent spark of the divine within me. Very simply, I've been carrying bells. I've attached a small brass, about an inch and a half little bitty bell to my keychain which I tend to wear either on my belt or on my daily carry bag. Each time I hear the sound of that bell, which is something distinctly different and new to my ear, I am reminded that I carry within me the spirit of the all there is. I am a walking beacon of spiritual energy wherever I go. You don't have to necessarily use bells, so. Anything that you can safely attach that creates a distinctive sound that is something different from your everyday environment. Some ideas are a baby's rattle, 
or a wooden or a stone bead bracelet, even an old fashioned tea baller with a sacred stone or a crystal inside it. Something that rattles or dings or clanks, something, anything that makes a sound, something different that will your ear will catch to remind you that you are a spiritual being enjoying a human experience. It's something to connect us to the divine both within and without every day. Well, it looks like the coffee cups are empty for this week. We hope you join us again next Tuesday, but you can find us at our website, twoyoungcrones.com. That's the number two young crones. If you are enjoying this sort of content and want to join the discussion, please come stir up the pot on our Discord community. Look on Patreon for Young Crones Cafe. We are also Young Crones Cafe on Twitter and Facebook. Until then, remember, we are witches who work with energies to affect change. We are believers in both imminent and transcendent divine. We are celebrants of the passage of the solar and lunar cycles. We are hedge walkers who pass back and forth between the worlds of the magical and the mundane. We are seekers of knowledge. And we are walkers of a spiritual tradition we call the path. So mote it be. So mote it be.